Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to uh, continue with on with the next lesson. Um, the exercise is similar to the preceding. Look at the code for directions, follow the assertion orders uh, that we rely on. So again, we've got this REPL.IT project set up here. Um, I customized the name so that it, if you want to see how to set that up, go to the first lesson. But um, yeah, we're just continuing on with this last one. So if you're seeing this video and you weren't following along with other videos, um, you'll see that we're on line 267 of the tests folder. And in the test folder, we're on uh, the file of two underscore functional dash tests dot JS. And so, um, yeah, here we are. So this is the last one that we did. Um, oh, wait, no, I just kind of scrolled up. Um, so yeah, this is the last one that we did where we basically instantiated the browser, we fill in the surname with Columbo, we press the button of submit, and then we assert that there was a successful um, a, uh, put request um, placed there. I think that this is a get request actually. Um, and then we say we want to assert that this is Cristoforo, this is Columbo, and that there's one element here. And then we're done. And so here it is. Uh, try it again. They're just saying no help this time. So let's see if I can do it without help. Um, so first fill in the form. I think we go browser dot, oh, I can't remember. Okay. I'm always looking at inst instructions anyways, browser dot fill. Okay. Browser dot fill. And why, how do we know where this is coming from? We're going to find where, uh, all, all the different things in this guy. So, uh, fill email the whatever this is, you can always go to the documentation for the library you're using to get the information. So, um, Phil, what we want to do is go surname. We're filling out the form with the ID of surname. And we're going to put in something here like, um, useful programmer. Okay, and then we want to assert that it's okay. So browser dot assert dot success. And that'll just call itself. This is just me going off my memory. No, browser dot fill surname useful program. Inside the element span name is Amerigo. Looks like we want to fill in this to be Amerigo, not useful programmer. So, uh, browser dot assert dot text and in there we're going to pick the id and the text is going to be a span with an id of um, name and because we filled in amerigo we want that to be what is there because we're asserting that that's what happened uh this the spoochy same thing browser dot assert dot text dot and then we've got uh, span on the ID of a uh, surname. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be Vespucci. And then we wanna assert that there's something there. So we go um, browser.assert. And I missed a T here, dot element. And uh, I guess we just want to make that one because we're just doing the same thing as above. And then we want to get rid of this assert.fail because um, that's certainly a failing test. Um, cool. I'm just cleaning it up now. Um, we can stop the server and restart it to go. I just kind of want to double check to see if I got anything. It's element, singular, span dates. Okay, so that's what I missed. Sp we want to we wanna get the ID with the span and dates. Um, yeah, so again, this is a function we're passing in two parameters. And the first one is the link to uh, the, is a link, um, it is the path to the DOM element called dates. And then we just want to make sure that there's one element there. So yeah, if I run the server now, this should start running. Again, you've got to stop and rerun your server. Um, we'll see that it's listening on ports, it's running. This is probably going to be the last test. Submit surname Vespucci, V-E-S-P-U-C-C-I, V-E-S-P-U-C-C-I, there we go. What happens if we fill this in? Oh, okay, cool. So if we fill this in with Amerigo, we're going to get Amerigo. I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, unknown, unknown. But if we fill it in with Vespucci, 
it should work. So the API knows that if we fill in the cert, if we make a put request on the surname, uh, the first name will show up. And so what we've done here is we've said browser dot fill uh, in the surname form. We've done Amerigo, and so we're getting undefined. So that's uh, not what we want. We want to make it uh, the Spucci is here. And so if we fill in the Spucci and we submit our form, we see that we get um, the feedback that we're looking from because this is checking that we've made a successful API request. So this one would have passed even if we made an, made the wrong one. And then we want to assert that this text, so span name, and if I right click here and inspect the element, you can see that um, Amerigo is actually, my computer's running slow because I'm exporting videos. The span with an ID of Amerigo is right there. And so that's what we're doing. We're saying browser.assert, and then they're saying to text here. So the text that's within this element is equal to Amerigo. And so, um, yeah, I think that now we've got it the way that we want it to. So I was just a little confused at the beginning. So if we stop the server and we rerun it, um, we're gonna see this guy's gonna kick up again. Um, basically NPM start, starts our server, and then we are running our tests. And my guess is all the tests are gonna pass this time. Oh, cool, something didn't work. Functional tests. So we still have one failing. Since this is the last one, we know we need this. Assertion error, expected values to be loosely deep equal. Christophero should loosely deep equal Amerigo. Huh. That doesn't make any sense. Submit Vespucci. Because right now, if we uh, submit Vespucci, we get Amerigo Vespucci. Functional test Vespucci, write your own. Expected values to be loosely deep equal. Node module, zombie assert. So what it's saying to me right here, assertion error, expected values to be loosely deep equal. Christophero should be deep equal to Amerigo. Uh, I wonder if we just have an error here, because if we go uh, Columbus, If we fill in, press button submit, surname. Oh, okay, so I'm making a mistake here. Okay, so browser.fill and then press button. Browser.fill. And then we want to chain on the press button of submit. And so that's not what we're doing right now. Browser.fill and then we want to say dot uh, press button. Yeah. So we want to press the button of submit. And that needs to be a string. And then we're going to pass in a function and then within this function is where we're going to do all our assertions yeah so that's what we were doing wrong in this one I think and so I'm pressing control command and up oh that only works on my normal editor oh wow this is getting bad okay and so what I want to do is just take all this code because it needs to be passed in to the uh, asynchronous call. So once we press the button, oh, there we go. And yeah, so okay, cool. So now when we press the button, assert.success, press button function, and then we pass in a, a function, uh, a callback function um, after we press the button. So it's going to wait and we're going to assert that it's a 200 a success, that it's Amerigo, and it's all that. Okay, cool. So let's run the tests and see what happens. So here we're, the server stopped, and then it's NPM start. So we started it again. You'll see that it's running now. And it looks like everything is passing. 
So yeah, if we put in Amerigo here, so that's what this is saying, browser.fill. So we're going to the browser and we're filling in the form. The form is called surname. If you inspect the element here, um, man, there's a lot going on with this one. Yeah, the, the name of the form is surname. And so it's filling it in based on the name of the form. And so what we're, what we're doing is we're saying, in the name of the form, put in uh, Vespucci. So here we're putting in Vespucci. And this is all, we're just making a little robot that does this. So we can run our tests to make sure that this application will do this uh, reliably even in the future when we add more um, to the overall program. And then we're saying we press the button. So on the submit, then it says, so once the submit happens, it's going to say, is the was it a success? So we have a successful um, put request set, sent here, and then we want to assert that the name, the span of the name, which is here, is Amerigo, which it is here. And then we want to assert that the surname is Vespucci, which it is here. And we want to assert that the dates are just one. And each of these correspond with the ID of the span element, which is this one, this one, and this one. And that's how that works. Um, cool. So if I copy this guy and go back to here, paste it in here, and you can say you've completed the challenge. And that's it for our quality assurance and testing with Chai. Um, so yeah, I want to just sum this up one more time. What we're doing with all this is we're making a bunch of little robots that we can run through our code and they'll tell us um, if our program is operating the way that we want. And this is especially valuable stuff. Some people actually start with tests. They, they call it tester and development. And so you'll just actually write a bunch of tests like this. And then it makes it even easier for the programmer because all they need to do is go in and just work through a list of tests. So in a lot of ways, um, this is a super powerful tool. And uh, I think that the headless browser is interesting because I think it's just faster. I think that's what they're going for. So this, the, so this software can just go in and just test a bunch of stuff like, is this working? Is this working? Is this working? And so, um, yeah, sometimes, I mean, I've worked on applications with thousands of lines of tests. And so when you hit run the test um, function, you actually, you know, you're running, you know, can users sign in? Can users go to this page? Can users go to this page and add a friend or something like that? And so that kind of stuff is what this is used for. So it's very useful stuff. Um, cool. We're done with this one. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next section.